Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling is in I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at new updates to Zim Tile so that we can use it for responsive layout without scaling content. So we have the layout class, but that will scale content responsively, and this uh, just uh, lays it out without scaling. So let's take a look at an example. We've also got some new things happening with the pose. A pose has a right and a bottom parameter now. Okay, we've got some code. We're running Zim 8.1.0 and we are going to take a look at a tile. We'll tell you what, why don't we view it in the browser here. Cut it open. Here's an example. So a tile has been used for art and usually it just clones or repeats an object a bunch of times. Uh, you can pass in a series and then it won't repeat the object, it'll instead show each object in a series. So uh, now we've added some layout parameters to this, one being spread. So right now if we open this up, you can see that the tile spreads across the page. So we've done that by adding a, a width and a height. You can also do it height-wise. So when you provide a width, it will spread out across the width. So each row would spread out across the width. And we can choose which way to um, arrange the items inside of here as well. If we squeeze like this, let's just see what happens when we squeeze. Well, first of all, why don't we turn the spread off? So if we turn the spread off, then we see that it all clumps together like that. So that's a natural, this is a tile without any width. And it has a spacing in here, a spacing in here, and a spacing in there. We can do various alignments. So there's aligning right on each of the columns. Here's aligning left on each of the columns. There's a center align. Same with uh, here. There's aligning top on each of the columns, aligning in the center, and aligning on the bottom. Stick those back to center. There's also a squeeze width. So if we squeeze, then it squeezes each row. And this one's squeezing in the horizontal. There's also a squeeze in the vertical, but this one's squeezing each row so that it hits the spacing. Uh, there is a spacing in here. The actual registration or the bounds of the dial are right around the hard part of the dial and ignore the ticks. And again, we can do alignment within there as well. So there it is, not squeezed and here it is squeezed. This also works on spreads, so we'll hit the spread here. And so now we're spreading across the stage and it looks like the squeeze isn't working, but actually if we then uh, take this, the squeeze will come into play. So we get hit here, now it's squeezing. So you see how this part is squeezing? If we don't have squeeze, that part stops where the rest of them stop. So that keeps it more in tabular form. You see that? But if we squeeze, then it starts to squeeze. And at that point, your alignment works. So there's alignment in the right, alignment on the left, takes the whole uh, row and does that alignment in the center, which sort of makes sense. As I squeeze, I can still see this stuff. You see that little gap there, a little gap there. I can still see this stuff until it hits there. So that gives you sort of optimum viewing, I guess, on that top uh, top row. So that's how it works. It also works in vertical in that way. Um, you can spread and squeeze both horizontally and vertically, but you could run into overlap if that's the case. You may or may not, depending on the, the size of these things. And by the way, these are all sort of chosen to be haphazard sizes so that we can see a little bit what's going on. Probably it would look better if, if your content wasn't so varied. It's not, not the end of the world. Uh, the dial, by the way. Oh, check the dial. We refresh here. There's no dial. Now there's a dial. So we're showing you that tile as well now can be dynamically operated on. So you can replace items in here, you can add items, you can remove items, and just call the, the remake, and it will remake all of the tile for you, so without problem. In the remake as well, we're maintaining the objects that are already there. So we're not actually... Uh, the one thing about a tile is, is you can pass in uh, Zim V values. These are 
these are special values that can do things like ranges and options or alternatives. In the past, there was some difficulty because you would make a tile and it would randomly show some things here. And if you remade that tile, it might randomly show different things. So here we wanted to have a way that it would remake the exact same <laughs> randomized <laughs> arrangement. <laughs> Especially it's important if you're resizing or remaking that we get the same arrangement that we had before. How we deal with that is when we make the tile in the first place, we take all the random things, we find out what they are, and we put them in a, a long array, so a linear array. That array is available as items. Tile.items at zero, tile.items at one, etc. And when the tile is remade, you can use that array. You can modify that array in any way you want. You can add things to the end of it, add things to the beginning of it, take things off, splice it, etc. Whatever array operations you want to do, do it on the items, and then just call remake, and it will remake the tile with your new items. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> why don't we dig into the code a little? Uh, hopefully you're still with us. Here we have the objects that we're tiling. Now, tiling can be a little bit tricky because of cloning. So by default, tile will clone. And what that has allowed us to do is repeat objects in the tile. And that was great for art so that we could tile a whole bunch of circles and we just pass in one circle and it clones them all. But in this case, we might want individual items uh, not to be cloned. So here we are passing in the individual items to the tile. We are passing in a series. If we don't pass in a series, if we just passed in an array, that is the zim v value for pick one of those things. That means pick anything from the array. So you would get a bunch of random stuff from this filling up four and two, shall we see, as long as cloning it. So we have cloning by default is true. So we save that up and we refresh here. Each time the dial is going to replace the second element. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> funny, huh? So here are all of these random things uh, being tiled, great. Let's see, I could demonstrate the cloning issue. If we turn cloning to be false, clone colon false, what it will do is it will not clone any of these things as they're made. So that means if something gets repeated, if, if we pick, say, B the, for the first object, and then later we pick B again, because each time it runs one of these tile things, it's picking randomly from here. If we pick B again, it's the real B. It's the original B not a clone B, and therefore we'll start seeing some gaps where things get removed. So there's some gaps. So there's a gap right there. We could see any number of gaps. Here we see two gaps. Because if this one was chosen a second time or even a third time, it removes it from where it was previously and ends up putting it at the last place. You get that? So we have to be careful a little bit. <clears throat> about cloning. There's a few other tricks too. Uh, so we'll bring the clone back and you'll see that then copies of it can be made. So now there's two, well, was two of those things. There's definitely copies of the circles. So each time it got picked, it was cloned and placed here. Now that creates a bit of a problem with, well, not with the dial because that was added after specifically, but say these were dials. So shall we just change them to dials? A, or this circle is a new dial. Like that. So now we've got a bunch of dials coming in. That would be a gray dial. Here's a couple that got replaced by a green dial. Uh, there's a couple dials. There could be three. There could be, I don't know why there's always, there's one dial. There's one dial. No dials. There's one dial. I'm trying to get more dials. More dials. Give me as many dials as I can get. Uh, well, we're back to two. There we go. Three dials. Now, if we had put an event on this dial right here, that event is on the original dial B. Because we're cloning in the tile, none of the tile dials would have that event. The, the event placed on a dial does not get cloned to the, the next dial that is made. So you can access these things afterwards. For instance, you could loop through the tile, find out which one's a dial, and put an event on it after. 
if you turn cloning off, so or, yeah, if you turn the cloning off, then you have no problem putting the event on this dial right here. Because that dial will remain the same dial throughout this process. Uh, you just won't get copies of the dial, you'll only get one of those dials. So let's uh, go back again. Oops, we'll call that a new circle. And we'll sort of put it back to how it was. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Cloning, uh, we will set to true. So we are cloning at the moment, these things. Now, another neat thing is, watch this. If we say three here, because we're not a series. Series, let's put that back to a series. So what a series does differently than random is it makes sure that it does these things in order. So now it will go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and then loop back around and go A, B, C, D again. Um, if you don't have the series, it was just randomly picking from this. Okay, so uh, let's do the series. Bloop. There they are. So that's how it was before, but now it's gotten to here. It's looping and doing this one again. There it is, and here's the the circle that was in there originally that got replaced by the dial, and then here's the next big one and that one, etc., and so on. Obviously, if you were to turn the cloning off, though, that looping would run into problems, right? Just a little bit of a check. Remember what's going to happen. Right now, all these things are cloned, but if we're looping through and now we need this one again and we turn cloning off, then it's going to take the original, because that's the only one there is, and put it there. So we won't have a top row. See? And refresh there. No. No top row except for that one, which got added later in the second position. Interesting, huh? Okay, so that was just a check on your cloning understanding. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> Good. Next, what happens if we add one more thing? Say we wanted just another G. Say we want another G on the end. So that is four by three. We want it to um, do that series, but stop at that G. That's not gonna happen. It's gonna get to the G, and as it tries to fill the third row, it'll go A, B, C. So we save that, and we refresh here. There it all is. There's that extra G. Let's see, that would have been this one right here. G, that's H. So we put an extra G in there, but darn, it started going around the loop again. So if you don't want that to happen, then you would say how many there are, and that would be 8 plus 1, 9. So then you would have to come in and say count colon 9. Now let's take a look. There we go. If we Let's take the spread off. So there, there's a center line column, here's a center line column, center line column, center line column, three things in that row. Even if we align that right, it stays in its column. This stays in its column. But if we squeeze, it all squeezes. There's center squeezed. Not bad, huh? And there's left squeezed. And same with the spread. So if we spread, there it is all spread. But this one is centered. If we're not squeezing, it wouldn't be centered. It'd be spread, but not, not squeezed. And there's right. Okay, so let's bring those back to center. We won't bother squeezing, and we'll spread, and we get rid of this one. That was that extra one that we wanted. But remember, we got that by putting in the count of nine. Oh, uh, would this work? What would happen now? One more check on the clone. So if we don't clone this and we say there's nine, it's going to try and make these. But when it gets to position this G, it is the same as that G. So it, it'll, it's not a clone version anymore. It will pull it from here and put it there. And by the way, at that time, it is this G right here, is that object. If we have the clone set to true, which is the default of tile, then it's a, this G would be, end up being a clone of that original. Okay, so let's save that and refresh here. And now it took the G from here and put it to there. So one more time, third time. That's what happens when you don't clone.
Okay, that's why cloning can be handy if you want copies of these things. But usually, if we're laying something out, we're no longer dealing with copies. We probably want to set the clone to false. I think that's probably the safest route to go. So if you're laying things out with a series, set the clone to false. Consider having it so that if you pass in a series, we remove the clone, but that's not necessarily going to fly. If you're artistically cloning a whole bunch of things and you want it to repeat and continue on, so you've got a series, but you expect a repetition of that series, then it might fool people because all of a sudden you're not cloning anymore and stuff would start disappearing. So I think this is probably the better default to, default to clone true. All right, so now we've got an original series. We don't want that extra one on the end. We no longer have nine. Then we're also resizing. So let's uh, move on down here. Here's a frame dot on resize. And that's my cat. Why don't you just take a look at that resize and I'll let my cat in. Letting the cat in. Cat's just sitting outside the window, but my frisbee's here. Oh, that is amazing. I cracked my favorite frisbee, and Amazon has now delivered it. How happy am I? All right, my cat wouldn't come in. It scratches at the back window thing, and so here I'm going, come on, Mala, come on. I'm right in the middle of a live recording. Uh, but you know how cats are, so I left the front door open. <laughs> That's my, my only solution. We better end this thing, huh? All right, so here's the resize. You've probably been looking at it for a little while now. Normally, we would just uh, resize it so it would look like this. Tile dot resize at the width that we want. So every time the frame changes, we're resizing the tile to that width. Uh, this is only if you're in a full mode. So here we are in a full mo mode. People are going to be changing their browser window possibly, or maybe not if it's for mobile. So that's why we're resizing so that it stretches out and moves. You can use the you can use a width in fit mode as well and just have it automatically stretch out to whatever you want. Uh, but then you probably won't have to do a resize event because nothing will be changing size. The whole fit mode scales all on its own. So you don't need to worry about resizing. So anyway, that's what it would normally look like, but I think you may recall that we've got these checkboxes that says switch it to from one thing to another. So uh, we hid that a little bit behind there in a resize tile. And so the resize tile looks like this, tile.resize. If the spread checkbox is checked, then use the stage width times nine, otherwise set the width to zero. So a resize of zero just takes it's no width. Uh, as a matter of fact, any small width in there, you wouldn't notice a difference. It would still collapse at all. But anyway, that's zero. Uh, then we're centering it again, because if we're resizing, you need to recenter something. We're, oh, we're just moving it a small amount, yeah, down a little bit to keep it away from the logo thing up here. So it's a little bit more, you see how that's almost at the bottom, and there's a little bit more room at the top. That's the resize stuff. And then what else have we got going on? We're resizing some other things, but uh, what are we talking about? But be talking about that darn cat, huh? So we've got these things. Oh, I've still got the wrong number of columns, so two. If we wanted to start off with it with no width, we can comment that out. But if we do comment that out, then we do not want to have a width down here anymore. So I'd have to like delete that. I think that would probably work. There we are starting with no width. So that's what a tile looks like with no width. We've had this for quite some time now, the tile like that. I mean, there's a few new things still. The uh, squeeze aspect of it is new, this thing, whoop, squeeze. Now the change the window size thing, uh, that little message that comes up when you first hit the squeeze says change window to see effect because right now it looks like nothing happened. I 
turning off and on squeeze, nothing's happening. It's when you squeeze the window more that you start seeing that that's squeezed and that's not squeezed. Squeezed, not squeezed. Okay, we got calls, rows, great. There's your spacings, which is optional, but you can change that. You can also have negative spacings and have things overlap one another. There's the squeeze. Uh, by default, we started off false, but check out the vertical squeeze. Let's change that to true now. So we can play around with the vertical squeeze and see what that looks like. So we refresh. Now the uh, rows themselves are bumped up to the spacing. So that's a vertical squeeze. You see how that's now kind of evened things off there, as a matter of fact. There it is without the spread. So this is what the squeeze looks without the spread. So that won't change. Uh, if you do spread squeeze the width, then there it is. Um, neat, huh? So that's your vertical squeeze hard-coded. And there's also still bottom. Vertical squeeze, top, vertical squeeze, center, vertical squeeze, and your left and right and all that kind of stuff may remain the same. So turn that back off to false. And you've got the starting aligns and the clone stuff we've been working through as well. Cool. There is one more important thing is how do you adjust the tile? How do you change a tile? We've mentioned it, but we haven't seen it in the code. So after one second, we are making a dial and uh, this is just stuff that the goofing around with the dial, so you'll see that in a second. But here's the important part. Tile.items at one, replace it with the dial. Or I could replace the third thing with the dial. So here it's replacing the second thing. Now the dial is replacing the third thing, etc. Or I could add the dial onto the end. So that would be tile.items.push. Dial. Like that. At which point the rows and columns get uh, reassigned based on how many things are in this list now. So we refresh. And now it's been added down there to the, to the left hand column. Now remember this is in the spread so that's why it's right to the left. If we don't have it in the spread it would be aligned in the center in the columns. Cool huh? Uh, so you can add as many things as you want. You can remove as many things as you want uh, by working with this items array right here. And it's just an array. So you can splice that. Uh, splice, by the way, will take things out of the middle somewhere and possibly add things to the middle of somewhere. Otherwise, slice. You can use slice. You can use push, pop, shift, unshift. Those adds things to the ends in the beginning and takes off things from the ends in the beginnings. And then you can just use the index to change any specific number. So that's your traditional array manipulation for the dial. Uh, we could have possibly tried to roll all of that into some sort of method right in the in the tile, but whatever. That would just be a fair bit of work for no real reason. You've got array manipulation there. So that's cool. There's some examples here. Oh, by the way, this tile is up at zimjs.com slash tile.html. zimjs.com slash tile.html. Once we do that, though, we then say tile remake. So you can pass in uh, an array there, or you can just change the items. So we've changed the items here. Then we just need remake. We don't have to pass back in tile.items. can if you want. We're centering it and moving it up a little bit and updating the stage. So that all happens in a little timeout. The dial, by the way, we're just having a bit of fun. As we change the dial, we're going through and adjusting the colors of the background. So I'll refresh that. There we go. Now, I sort of liked it. If it's upright, then we're, cha we're not changing the color of anything. But if I move to here, we're changing this. Then it goes to that. And then it has to come around this way still. By default, so there you go, that's kind of fun, huh? Yeah. By default, the order of this would be across the top and then from here and across. So as I increased naturally, it would go, well, it would start here naturally, but I sort of added some to it, so it starts here. So it would go here, here, then it would drop down to here and over. And I didn't want that. So I had to rearrange the order. So there's the rearranged order as a lookup table in a sense. 
And then as I change the tile, well, anyway, this is just traditional programming. I'm using that lookup to adjust the tile items at that point. All right. So there we are accessing those items in the tile based on the tile.items. You could also use tile.getchildat and then get the index that way. Uh, what I wanted to get, though, this has been a bit of a lengthy one, perhaps. What I wanted to get to, though, was the new pose, uh, the things that we can do with pose. Uh, tell you what, uh, that's kind of big, it's kind of cool. Why don't we leave the new pose to yet another bubbling? And then I can show you some code examples of that as well and not feel like I'm rushed here at the end. We've created down here at the bottom, there's the checkbox, checkbox, radio buttons, radio buttons. There's also a bar, but anyway, this stuff is also tiled. So we just made those things. We've given them some styles here. You can come in into the example and take a look. But look, we've made a nav tile and we just said, please tile that stuff. Along the nav, we've given it a width, some uh, four, four columns, one row, and the spacing that we want. And that was really easy to lay out this nav along the bottom. I don't know if you noticed that, but see, as I squeeze like that, there it is, that's as, as close as it will go. That's the 30, 30, and 30 there, which is sort of too bad. You end up losing that interface, but that's probably all right. And now it stretches out along the bottom. And once again, that is not scaled. So you have, to some degree, optimal. If, if, um, if you're using a full mode and not scaling at all, that's kind of, uh, well, it probably won't matter. These are vectors, um, I don't really notice scaling, but it, you can squeeze too much or make it too big and it might show some problems. But anyway, that's um, now you have an option uh, doing that thing without the layout class. There you go. Uh, that is a what's bubbling at Zip. We'll take a look at the, the, pose, uh, the pose method coming up in the next What's Bubbling. I am Inventor Dan Zen. Have a great day. If you want to talk more about this stuff, come on in to the Zim Slack channel. So zimjs.com slash slack, S-L-A-C-K. And uh, join us in discussion, talk, and ask questions, uh, post examples, all that kind of stuff. Ciao.